Welcome back to Simright Fashion Academy YouTube channel for another interesting tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll be teaching you how to sew this beautiful ruffled blouse. This is the yoke line and I'm going to bead the whole of this. And this is a ruffled sleeve as you can see as well. So this is what the back looks like. It has a zipper from the down into the yoke and we are going to also embellish the whole of this so if this is what you want to learn in this class i'll encourage you to stay till the end of this tutorial to learn more thank you so to begin this tutorial you are going to draft your full basic bodice pattern so here is my full basic bodice pattern now we are making a full blouse right here and this particular dress we are making is asymmetric as you can see right here so I've already imputed all my necessary measurements, but I'm going to explain what I did right here. The first line is the shoulder line. Second line is the chest line. Bust point line. Under bust point line. This is my waist. And this is the full length of this blouse. So we are making a full blouse. So the measurement is as follows. Place your tape on the shoulder. I have 9.75 as my chest line. How did I get that? I used my bust. My bust circumference is 44. I divided it by 6 and I added 1.5. So it gave me about 8.8, .8, which I approximated to 8.75. Okay. So now plus 1 inch of my shoulder drop. That is how I got 9.75. I believe you are familiar with that. My bust point is 13, my under bust is 17, my waist is 18 inches, and the full length of this blouse is 27 inches. The bust band measurement here is 4.5 from the center front. I also place the same 4.5 at the waist center front and on the full length. The width of my dart is 1.5. I shared 0 0.75, 0 0.75 for bust contouring. So the first thing we are going to do is to construct this asymmetric line okay so I, I believe you have seen my paper so i want the asymmetric dress to run this way this is the mid armhole and i'm going to connect it directly to the like this so that is how we are going to contour it now i'm going to create take the measurement of my neckline depth and neckline width so here i'm working with neckline depth and uh, neckline width of 4.5 okay and i'll be working with neckline is actually um it's actually a kenu neckline anyway so i'll just go by three or four inches let me go by four inches okay so if i go by four inches i will extend this line to five inches let me use five by by 3.5 by four inches so i'm going to connect what I have. So I'll also measure from this side is 5 and this side is also 5. Then I'm going to connect it to 4 inches. So it depends on how big you want it or let us do 3 and half. Let us do 3 and half. So we have the, the actual asymmetric shape, um, canoe neckline shape. So I'll go this way to the 5. Okay, so later I'm going to connect it with. So I'm freehanding it because my ruler might not actually give me that curve the way I want it. So if I have to place my ruler here to here, I might not get that curve the way I want it. So it's better you freehand it and get the shape you want. So that is it. So neckline width is 5 and neckline depth is 3.5 okay so now we are done with the upper part we are going to cut out this yoke we are cutting out this yoke line and it's going to carry the ruffles as you can see on the thumbnail so the next thing we are going to do before creating the neckline this is the normal full shoulder measurement from the natural neckline simply divide it into two so this is the line connect what you divided on the bust line i'll do the same here and also connect on the bust line. All right, so now we are going to contour this dress. And this line is going to be our overbust contour line. 
So I'll place my tape here. I'll come in by 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Once I've done that, I'll connect it like this, 0 0.75. Connect it like this at 0 0.75. True. Then I'll come over here and do the same. I'll go 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Then I'm going to connect that way. All right, so the next we will do is the over the under bust contouring. So the under bust contouring I'm working with is 37. I'm working with under bust contouring of 37 inches. So all you do is to, this is my center front. This center line is the center front. So all you need to do is your divide your under bust circumference. My under bust circumference are working with 37. Divide by four will give me 9.25. So this 9.25, I'll start from the center front like this and measure 9.25. Then what I have left remaining is 2 inches. So these 2 inches, I'll come over to the underbust line that, the one facing the center front. I'm going to impute 0 0.25. And the remaining from 2 inches is 1.75. I'll impute it on this way. That is how I contour my underbust and it works perfectly for me. But before you do that, make sure that on the waistline, I did not uh, explain that. When I was drafting the basic bodies, on the waistline, I placed my tape on the underbust, measure my real waist. My waist is 39 divided by 4 is 9.75. Make sure you replace this that of 1.5 before you contour the underbust, okay? So now, I'll place this this way. I'll flip my ruler this way to make sure you raise your curve ruler a little bit this way. Then connect to the curve. So after that is done, I'm going to take this to this and take this to this. So you can see how I'm taking it. So that means that we are cutting off all of this shaded part. So what I did right here now is what I'm going to repeat on the other side. You know it's asymmetric and it has the same, uh, it's the same contour line. I'll start from this and repeat this on this other side. And that is the dress. So before I repeat it on this part, we are going to work on the neckline. Okay, the neckline is actually this way anyway. So if you want to make maybe a sweetheart neckline, you can go ahead, but it's okay. So I will do this, then we'll cut the pattern. So on the hem of this pattern, I love to give um, the hem of my dress a design, especially for blouses. So I'll just come on this tip and measure 1.5, measure 1.5. So I'm going to use this 1.5 to shape in, give the shape I want on this dress. So I love to go this way. So it depends. You can go this way too. You can do it like this. You can also flip your ruler like this. So it all depends on the design you want to give. So... I'm just thinking if we can do something like this to the dots and then we'll now extend this line a little just a little like let me say half inch and now connect it with a rounded shape so it's all your choice anyway you can do whatever you feel that works for you on your blouse design so this is just to give it that blouse design shape okay just a little bit so it's not that so i'm going to repeat what i did here on this and then we'll cut so here i'm done contouring this other part so i did the same thing i did here on this part so now i want to make a little correction to this over bust instead of using this over bust it's looking too long so instead of using it i'll just go ahead and use a princess that so for my princess that i'll just place my pattern ruler like this so it's all by your choice anyway it's all by choice so what i will do is to take the measurement of my i love to take the measurement of the armhole and find the midpoint so i have 11 and a half so i'll divide 11 and a half by two if I divide it by 2, I have 5.75. Uh, so here is my 5 to the quarter. So I'll just connect a princess that there. So I will use a princess that here. That's what I mean. 
so it's better than that so I'll just go ahead and come out this way okay and then measure one inch down measure one inch down and connect okay so you see I'm supposed to come out I'm sorry about this so I have one inch and reconnect the um hole okay so i'll be using a princess bar. so you can use this or this two of them are okay but i just feel it's too long anyway so that is the first adjustment i want to make i'm no longer using this so next adjustment i want to make on this dress is the asymmetric line so the asymmetric line will start from here the midpoint and not end on the armhole i want it to end two and half inches two and half inches so meaning that the line the yoke line will go like this okay so that is the new line i want to work with so i'm no longer working with this because i just want to repl replicate what we have on the thumbnail exactly so i just looked at it well and notice that symmetric line all of these parts are the yoke all right so now that means that the over bust will be recontoured again so this line that means this line, I'm going to take 0.75 here, take 0.75 out. So that means this is my new line. This is my new line. So that is the little adjustments I want to make. So all of this area is going to serve as the yoke. So I'm going to cut out this pattern because we are done right away. So I'm going to take my time to cut the pattern because of the adjustment I made right now from the armhole first then I'll go this way So I'm cutting this pattern on camera so you'll be able to see exactly how I cut it because of the adjustments I just made. So I'm going to close up my boss that right now on the left side. Then after that I'll continue my cutting so I'm cutting out the yoke line as you can see So I'm closing up the right bust that too. So after closing it up, we are done with the front pattern. So this is what the front pattern looks like as you can see. So the next thing we are going to do is to put them together and fill in the part that has a shortage as you can see. So I will place it at the bust point and align it. So here you can see it has a little shortage. So I'll just place my paper below and then stick my adhesive to it and make the necessary replacements. So you can see how I'm filling it up. So make sure you fill it up so you don't have a shortage. So align the yoke and then you see the space that it created at that point and the gap because of the overburst that which needs to be replaced as well so this is how i'm going to align it so i'll just make sure i fill in that gap 
as you can see right there. So I'll use my ruler and align it to that point. Then make a little extension. My boss that is 1.5. I'll replace it on this side. And then I'm going to reconnect that part. So when you are doing this, make sure your paper runs through to the waistline. So I'll just attach my paper back so it runs through to the waistline. So I'll be able to connect from the yoke line to the waistline. So I'm remarking my 1.5 inch and I'm going to blend it back in there. So this is what I have at the end of the day. So I just trim it off. So with this, we have our bust here well replaced. So the front pattern is actually very ready now. So the next thing we are going to do is to go over to the back pattern. So here is the front pattern. So we'll go over to the drafting of the back. So here is my back pattern. So you need your plain back piece. This is my shoulder, my chest line, the way. So the back pattern is two inches shorter than the front pattern. So from the shoulder, my chest, I took my measurement accordingly. And my waist is two inches different. And the full length is two inches different from the front piece because of the boss that technique. So here I came up by 1.5 because I want my blouse to have a little bit uh, curve on the down part. So I came down by 0 0.5 at the center back and connected accordingly. So at the center front, uh, at the center back, I came out by one inch to contour my center back, as you can see. So I'll just take my measurements. My my that is one inch. So I'll just take my measurements. Of my waist divide by four then divide by two to get my that so after contouring I'll be taking my actual bust circumference divide by four and mark and from the contour line my waist divide by four I'll mark then I'll replace my that of one inch so I'm going to connect the new lines as you can see right there then for the hip the hip remains the same so I'll just go ahead and connect that hip back to the point as you can see. So the back is actually simple. So now I'm going to take the same width of my neckline. So I came down by depth of 2 inches for the back and 5 inches for the width because it's a Kenu neckline. So now... I'm going to come up by two inches and connect to my chest line. Or you can make it two and a half inches for the back yoke. So this is what the back yoke looks like. And I'm going to extend my dart as you can see. So here my pattern is very much ready. So the next is to start cutting it accordingly. So after cutting my back pattern, this is what I have. So the back pattern is actually simple, like I earlier said. So next, I'm going to come in with my fabric. I'm using Isiago fabric, and I'll use a doll face satin for the lining. So I've cut out my patterns, as you can see. I added half an inch for the joining, and then two inches on the side, half 
inch on the hem part of this dress as you can see so it can also be one inch if you want so now the front piece is ready and it has a yoke as well so this is the back piece my zipper allowance is one inch as you can see so two inches on the side for sewing allowance so now i'm going to remove my pattern because i want to create the bustier padding so i love to use my pattern to create my bustier padding so for the center front area i'll just come in by one one inch follow exactly the asymmetric pattern and from the bust point i'll come in by zero by four inches which is my bust radius and connect so i'll cut out what i have on this part that will serve from the under bust i'll use it to pad this dress so for the side i'll also measure my bust radius and take it all around so from the upper side i give a gap of one inch then on the lower side i'll use my bust radius so here is the upper part of it so i'll cut out all of this for my wadding so i'll repeat the same process for the left side my bust point under bust difference is the bust radius. I'm using 4 inches for it. So I'll take the 4 inches all around as you can see and connect. So now I'm going to cut it out immediately. So once I'm done cutting out, the next I'm going to do is to cut it out on my using my wadding so i'll come in with my wadding and I've, i already cut it out and added half an inch only on the side i will stitch together and make sure that the sticky part of it is on top because that is the part we are going to stick to the dress so i'll take it to the dress then make a mark on top to show the upper part of it so i'll take it to the front pattern and place them accordingly so when, when working on asymmetric, you actually need to be very, very careful. So we are sticking this to the main fabric. So I'll just bring the sticky parts and place it on the main fabric, as you can see, from the under bust area. Then I'll be using my hair stay to cover it. So here I've done it. I've used my hair stay to cover it. So next is to go over to the machine. I'm going to pin it at the under bust, then sew from the down piece at 0 0.5. So here I'm done sewing. This is what I have. I also stitch for the lining as well. So the next thing we are going to do is to go over to the back and join the half an inch to make it one pieces. So I'm done doing that and I've given it a good press as you can see too. So next is to cut out the yoke. So the yoke I'm using a mesh for it and I'll also use a fabric for it just to make it a, a little bit stable. So I'm cutting my yoke. You can see how I cut and I added my seam allowances where necessary. So on the side of the yoke where I have my seam allowance, I added the 2 inches as you can see. And for the back, I added 1 inch for the zipper. So I'm done sewing and turning the yoke. So next is to join the yoke to the main body. So I'll just go ahead and stitch to the fabric. So for the back, I'll also join it to the back body so it's just your normal uh, yoke joining but for this is in an asymmetric form so but before we join the yoke we are going to take the measurement of where the ruffles is going to be so i've taken my measurement of my ruffle and i'll measure where because it's going to pass my sleeve so from one end of the sleeve i'll just measure so there i have 10 inches so 24 plus 10 which is for the sleeve 
plus 8 inches which is at the back will give us 42 multiplied by 3 will tell you the amount or the length of ruffle we are going to ruffle from the front to the sleeve and to the back so here I'm going to cut out my I've already cut it out so the velvet I hesitated it to stabilize, stabilize it so the length and the width is nine inches so i'll place it on fold i'll have four and half so by the time i stitch half an inch i'll be left with four inches so this is the best method if you want an easy flans ruffling you can go ahead and use the straight method you can also use the spiral method but the boat gives the same result as you can see from the dress we made. So I'll put my crinoline. My crinoline is 3 inches. Take note, I'm using 3 inches crinoline. So I will go over to pin and stitch. So I'll first pin the crinoline. I'll insert the crinoline into the, the velvet as you can see then and stitch it close give it a good press so this is what i have at the end of the day so the front piece is 24 inches multiplied by three will tell me the length at which we are going to ruffle only for the front because we've already taken the whole calculation of everything before we cut so 24 multiplied by three so i have about uh, 72 inches length so i'll put my pin there and i'll go over to the machine and ruffle and stop at the pin so when ruffling make sure you give a gap of half an inch to sew in the sleeve so i'll just pin it there and go over to the machine to ruffle it into the front but accordingly so you can go ahead and ruffle the way you want you can be kiss ruffle or you can be box pleating anyhow you want you can do that so i'm going to do that for the front till i get to the pin point so this is what i have after i'm done ruffling so the next we are going to do is to also take the measurement of the part that will be on the sleeve so the sleeve area i measure 10 inches multiply by 3 will give me 30 inches then i'll put my pin at that 30 inches point so for this we will leave it you will get to the sleeve so from this is how we are going to ruffle it on the sleeve so now I'm going to leave that part for the sleeve and we'll go over to the back piece. So from that pin point of 30 inches, I'm going to measure the rest of 24 inches, which is 8 inches measured for the back, where we are going to attach after the zipper is 8 inches. So multiply by 3. So always multiply by, by 3 to give you the actual ruffle you want so i'll just measure here i have 25 inches and 24 inches i added just one inch to it which is 25 so i'll pick up the back that belongs to that part the continuation so i have the two back piece but i'm going to pick up the part that i'm going to ruffle for the back so you can see that is the part that continues the back so i'll just go ahead and pleat that 24 inches to the back still leaving the space for the sleeve so this is the space for the sleeve as you can see so till i join the sleeve then i'll ruffle it to continue that piece so the front and the back piece is ready so the next thing we want to do now is to sew the yoke. So I'll pick up the front yoke and sew. And pick up the back yoke and stitch too. So I'm going to sew the yoke accordingly. So after sewing the yoke, this is what I have for the yoke at the front. So I'll place the 
lining make sure you pin the lining same line to same line so i've done that this is what i have I'm, i've given it a good press so but before i gave it a good press the stitches will be bulky if you are using the velvet fabric with crinoline so if you are using organza it will be less bulky for you so make sure you trim off the bulky part before you turn with your lining so now i'm going to sew my yoke to the back too from the zipper allowance i'll sew it so here i've sewn and i've also attached my lining accordingly so i did that for the both sides of the dress so the front and the back dress is ready now the next thing i want to do is to sew the sleeve so that we will continue uh, the ruffles so this is what we'll have right here so i'll just go ahead and sew the sleeve but before we sew the sleeve i have to close up the sides of the dress my fitting uh, uh, issues i have to sew my seam allowance then reduce the lining the lining is reduced by half an inch as you can see so we'll be able to turn the lining perfectly to have a perfect inseam finishing so i'll go over and turn you can see the lining is shorter than the main fabric so i'll go ahead and stitch at 0 0.5 as you can see flip the lining and the fabric put everything inside match seam line to seam line secure with my pins go ahead and stitch at 0 0.5 inches 0.5 inch sorry so here i'm done sewing at 0 0.5 so i'm going to place some notches to it before i turn so here i'm turning it and then i'm going to give it a good press so this is what it looks like so i'll top stitch on the doll face lining first so i'll top stitch and give it a good press so here i've done that so you can see what it looks like so the next i'm going to do is to couple the dress together by sewing my zipper so i'm going to sew my zipper so here i've sewn my zipper so the zipper is ready right now so the next thing is to sew the sleeve area so here is my zipper so um i've cut out my sleeve and added one one inch seam allowance on the side and 0 0.5 on the upper piece so i placed my notch at the center grain line and on the front sleeve too so i'll pick up the sleeve then i'm going to place it according to which is in front so this the part that is supposed to be for the right sleeve or the left sleeve i'm going to place it accordingly so i'm trying to match the sleeves according to the notches i made so i'll bring in the right the sleeve that is on the left and then i'm going to attack the sleeve before i make the ruffles so i'll place it on this a sleeve grain line and stitch at 0 0.5 inch then i'll go ahead and ruffle the remaining parts of the sleeve so you can see i also made sure i weaved that part so i'll be able to ruffle it accordingly so i'll go ahead and ruffle so this is what my ruffle looks like i'm done with the ruffle right now on the sleeve so i'm going to close up that we are going to sew the front is the same way we stitched the one in the front of the dress so i'm going to measure one and a half because we are going to sew half an inch first then after one and a half we'll have the flounces at one one inch interval so i'm marking the first flounce will be here one two three four five 
so we are going to have the flans at this point so you can also do one and a half inch interval it all depends on how you want to space it so we can do i think this is too close so we can we can do one and half one and half so what i mean is after one and a half you can sew the flans so here i have the first flans the first flans will run here one two three four five so now to sew this flans i'm going to use a square fabric two i'm not cutting the spiral flans for it i'm using square fabric the width of my fabric is seven inches because i want it smaller and i have a long length of it i have a long length of it so the long length i'm using for one of them is up to 80 inches so by the time i i ruffle and i'm satisfied then i'll cut off the excess and use it for the next line so now i'll use my three inches trinoline as usual i'm going to place it this way giving a gap of about one inch so i'll be able to fold this part at the end of the day so i'll just fold this part which is the edge and then bend it this way so i'll just go ahead and say position it very appropriately at the center and then pin so i'm going to secure it with my pin so but i'll first test this so i'll stabilize the velvet so if you're working with velvet test it before you sew your flans let me do that so now you can see i've pinned my velvet i test it and i placed my crinoline inside of it and secure with my pin so i'll go ahead and run my stitches on it to hold it firm then i'll ruffle it on the sleeve so after sewing the crinoline you can see what i have and i gave it a good press so it's actually looking very fine so the next thing i'm going to do i'll go over to the max i made i'll start pleating so i'll start my pleats from the down part so i'm going to pleat in this direction from the last line i'll pleat so you can just pleat anyhow you want to pleat okay so just keep pleating keep pleating after that i'll pleat on the second line after that after that till i finish up the space let me do that so you can see i've sewn one two three four and this is what it looks like already so it's forming the sleeve on the thumbnail already so this is the last one okay so this is the easiest way to make your flans instead of going through the spiral method so i'm going to sew the last one right on the same line and i'll continue with my ruffling okay so you can go ahead and ruffle you can see how i'm ruffling so after that we'll sew this to the dress now instead of sewing the last one on the tip of the sleeve like this for ease of sewing into the dress i always like to sew the last one on the arm hole so i'll just take this last one and i'll start from the side i'll pleat it all around like that all around then this one will be easy for us to do what to place on top and stitch so i will pleat it here and then sew this finally to this so now you can see i've sewn it the last one into the sleeve so it's easier right now to place this on top of it like this so i'm going to place it the center grain line that is the seam line you place it on top like this and then stitch all around so i'm going to take it all around then later i'll close the sides let me do that in the sleeve this is what we have i've closed the side of this sleeve so you can see how beautiful our sleeve is looking okay so that is how we come to the end of this tutorial and i believe this class was helpful to you so if you are new to this channel please kindly subscribe turn on your notification bell to receive videos like this every day like this video share to family and friends drop your comment on the comment section 
and your suggestions as well. Thank you once again. See you in the next class. Bye.